Hello, everyone, and welcome to the penultimate session of the 2022 Big Blue Button World Conference. Uh, we are so pleased to have you here and to have a fantastic speaker and presentation ready to go for you. So this session um, is all about making hybrid teaching easier with Big Blue Button. Seeing you know, the end of the pandemic coming into sight, classes are moving back into physical in-person classrooms, but the benefits of digital tools like Big Blue Button are here to stay. Rudiger Rolf is the Deputy Head of Digital Teaching at the University of Osnabrück. From the perspective of a German university, he will share his and his colleagues' ideas on how to improve Big Blue Button for a hybrid future. Welcome. Thank you for the introduction. So uh, yeah, let's start with a um, disclaimer. So what we have here is a vision, not a reality. Also, we are working on this. Um, it's more to get your attention on this and maybe even find collaborators for the next years uh, to work on this. Um, so um, our current issue is that we after the, within the pandemic encountered that live streaming became a much bigger issue uh, at our university because um, recordings took some time and um, with live streaming students could get the content immediately so when they visited a the class they mostly used the recordings that we at our university do with opencast and thank you Lars for giving an insight to opencast an hour ago um, uh, and yeah, we simply saw, okay, that's available in the evening or on the next day even. And within the pandemic, people had a lot of time and were claiming, hey, we want to join the live class also, they could not attend in person. Uh, and so, yeah, we started live streaming with Wowza. And I must say, we do not like it very much. And I would say also the feedback from teachers and students was not very good uh, on this, unlike to Big Blue Button. But if we look on the pros and cons of the different tools, uh, if we start with viewers per event, for example, we see for our recordings, we have nearly unlimited number of viewers, but this is not simultaneous like with the live tools. So um, yeah, we sub often have uh, uh, with popular events, a few thousand uh, views but um, this is happening at different times. And yeah, with live streaming, uh, I said a thousand, I would even say it's way more than a thousand uh, viewers that we can have uh, because of uh, the point, uh, the bandwidth of our university is limiting us. And if you go with CDNs, you can get even more, but we are at least a German university. We care a lot about privacy issues, GDPR, and so on. So um, that was not frequently used, at least with the teaching. And with Big Blue Button, um, when we started, we had 200 to 250 persons within a course. The biggest courses that we have here at our university are um, 600 people. So with our current setup um, for Big Blue Button with roughly 500 viewers, we are in a good way. But if kind of lockdown would happen again and so on people would be, uh, only join in presence uh, could not join in presence anymore we are looking forward that big blue button is uh, improving quite a lot and that we hopefully will go over 500 viewers uh, and do not need and have do not see any reason for live streaming anymore but uh, yeah as i said with recordings we have a delay in publishing of hours and um with live streaming, it depends if you have HLS with a low latency, that might be three seconds. We did not care a lot about improving the latency, so we have roughly 30 seconds. And that was not very much liked by presenters. At, um, yeah, you had um, uh, the issue that lecturers were not aware what they talked about 30 seconds ago when in chat a question came up or something like this also we see that we lead, need with mpeg4 streaming in full hd what we usually did um, quite some uh, bandwidth that was not an 
available in rural regions of Germany. And so the delay could even be longer. And yeah, if we look at big blue button, we have fragments of seconds so that interactivity is doable. And that is, I guess, the next point I have on my slides that yeah, for typical recordings, we do not see in any interactivity. And we don't think that is a problem because people are usually not online at the same time watching a recording. <clears throat> and uh, so we tried in the past interactivity tools here, like chatting on a recording and so on, but uh, that was not used. People sometimes use forums within the LMS and so on, but yeah, um, not a real issue. And for live streaming, we had a third party chat within the LMS <clears throat> that was used. And as I said, with a 30 second delay, was not felt very uh, useful from at least lecturers. And with Big Blue Button, you probably know all the benefits we have here with the chat, the notes, the polls, breakout rooms, what are that are not very much used, at least in lectures, but in seminars very often. Uh, and for sure, video and audio from the viewers if they want to ask a question. And um, yeah, on the other hand, what we see in our recordings and our live streaming, we have at our university um, 27 rooms equipped with, um, I would not say broadcast quality cameras, but with quite good cameras. So typically Sony or Panasonic pen tilt cameras um, that did a good job for several years and provide us with full HD uh, quality or in some cases even 4K. We have uh, Lavalier mi microphones uh, which provide us with got good audio and we also have um, um, boundary microphones as a backup if we see issues with um, the battery and so on of the Lavalier wireless microphones. And uh, yeah, for Big Blue Button, we have notebook and webcam. And we noticed within the last uh, months uh, when people came back to the university that um, they bring their notebook and their webcam to seminar rooms, for example. And that is not a very good experience. So we could, can improve on this with conference cameras and so on. but. Um, the typical way is then the lecturer has to connect it, sometimes would need drivers and so on. And our experience with uh, what we do in the classrooms is everything should be as automated as possible. Uh, because if you have to set up anything before your presentation, uh, you might uh, get errors. And uh, for example, uh, I guess that is my next point here. Um, yeah, we see that opencast recordings and live streaming is done completely at our university, at least without interference or any action that the lecturer has to do that is scheduled. And <clears throat> um, the technology just starts and students within the LMS can see the recording or the live streaming. And for Big Blue Button, everything has to be set up manually. Um, you have to connect to this and um, lecturers might even forget about this. And um, <clears throat> yeah, so we see the issue that the notebook and the webcam and the manual um, joining of the meeting with your own uh, hardware is the biggest issue in providing, let's say, reliable services uh, for hybrid teaching, not for what we see from home, like we have it at the moment um, with um, um, uh, full uh, video conferences. And uh, what we really would like to get then is uh, yeah, that we also can include the professional AV um, it can make big blue buttons uh, video conference something that starts automatically that joins every hardware or every device we want automatically and that we finally can get rid of the additional service of live streaming because big blue button will be sufficient for our needs um, 
And yeah, what do we have in the classroom? We have cameras, we have document cameras, we have PCs standing there, we have uh, microphones, um, and um, the classroom is what we are aiming for, but we also would see the benefit for seminar rooms, uh, so smaller rooms here, uh, or um, even for meeting rooms, as if you could say, you go to a meeting room and uh, everything is set up at the time that you want it to set up. Uh, you do not need to get stressed before. And looking at the devices, um, we see that uh, we have different interfaces for all of these uh, um, devices here. So for example, most cameras we use have IP streaming. So we could use um, web RTMP protocol, we could use RTSP protocol, and some of the newer devices even have um, NDI, which would even uh, decrease the latency. Or we could use um, USB on several of these cameras to get the, the signal, or even if we have HDMI there, you could use a USB HDMI grabber or whatever to uh, get to that signal. It would be quite similar uh, with the document cameras. Also, we usually have, at least in the uh, devices, we have no um, uh, streaming uh, uh, tools included. Uh, for the PC we have in the classroom, we could simply join with it in Big Blue Button session. We um, could use IP streaming uh, again. Um, for example, NDI again, um, and we could also use HDMI grabbers to uh, get the signal that we already sent to the projectors. And um, yeah, something similar for uh, the microphones, we could stream the signal, we could use an USB sound device, or we could uh, join with a PC that uh, the microphone is connected to. Um, Another point that seems to us very important and that I already mentioned is uh, scheduling. So um, in the upper upper image, you could see that um, at our university for every course, we have an agenda. So we know when an, a lesson will happen and um, we know when people would join uh, these sessions. Um, so we could use this data to trigger it. On the other hand, you could probably think of a regular calendar app like Google Calendar or whatever. Or as we know, we have many LMS systems with uh, some uh, um, agenda information that should be used. <clears throat> and um, yeah, after we get the data when it happens and we know what we have in the classroom, we need to connect this somehow. And our idea is to get an uh, automated big blue button uh, client. We are currently have somebody working on a short term solution, I would say, that would be uh, to use Selenium or Playwright with a possible headless browser. So um, we um, uh, would then get the devices. We also would see, for example, for the IP cameras that we um, uh, get the signal uh, with FFmpeg and make a USB device that is usable by um, uh, the browser um, from that IP camera stream. And we could, with one or several clients, uh, join every um, um, device that we have in the room. Um, we see here a downside that it probably is not as reliable and stable as we in the long term would hope. And so for the long term solution, we would hope that uh, WIP, WebRTC HTTP ingest protocol could be an option to improve the situation that I can better address um, uh, what I, uh, uh, how to ingest the media streams that I have here and that we hopefully would um, need more lightweight clients. So simple, uh, maybe even Raspberry also would be enough to ingest what we have, uh, what we want to get into the room then. And uh, 
for the audio also uh, zip your eye uh, could be an idea to get the audio into the room also we have not invested that much uh, time in that idea at the moment um yeah and um for improving the situation within the classroom we see that we want more features within a uh, big blue button so for example uh, if we want to use the document camera, it would be good if the presentation area uh, could get a live video also. So at the moment we have the screen sharing, we have um, videos there, we have um, the presentation upload, but a document camera or would help very much or a camera that is uh, facing uh, the blackboard or something like this. So we see many uh, use cases for this. Um, and uh, the other point would be um, that it's not very much related to this issue, but we see that we have a need for a moderated chat for large classrooms at least. Um, so we need to remove messages that have, uh, yeah, are violating uh, pers uh, our um, terms of use. We would like to filter keywords that could be problematic and even a hold message that a moderator has to approve it would be great. Um, and yeah, also much asked for is a moderator's chat, even for the hybrid settings. That's more important as moderators sometimes need to have, um, di um, yeah, coordinate them without uh, letting others know. Um, we get a lot of, we set a lot of hope and that is what uh, I see in such presentations again into a Q&A tool. W watching the chat is quite distracting for me as whenever something pops up I'm looking there uh, to see if the question came up or not. Um, and uh, something where people that is focused only on questions where um, um, students could ask the questions, other students vote on, hey, that's a question that I'm also interested in, or that's a stupid question. So that um, I see an ordered list um, uh, where I can uh, see, okay, that is a question very many people are interested in. Uh, and I could uh, then click on this question, answer them, and people would also see what question I'm currently answering. Um, um, and again, um, preparing polls would also be, especially for such live uh, situations, be a very important part. So we get the feedback that uh, typing in the question, typing in the answers and so on is quite, uh, uh, yeah, time consuming and distracting. Uh, I know that there is a quick um, feature within uh, the PowerPoint settings, but if people make screen sharing and so on, uh, that is not uh, as helpful as it would be when I'm presenting in the way I'm doing it this at the moment. And we also would need something to resolve hands, so raise hands. Uh, and opening by that the microphone for the speaker. Um, and uh, yeah, the next point would, as we have now different roles within the room, we would have different use case, uh, case scenarios for uh, the persons. So um, participants have um, these different roles, for example, the teacher, the remote student, the student within the classroom, and um, even a presentation PC if I want to have a nice view uh, for all people in the room. And um, the teacher's view, for example, should be very focused on the QA tool, on managing the polls, uh, managing raised hands and uh, controlling the presentation. Um, it should be focused that not too many uh, distractions uh, come up um, and uh, an idea would be, for example, to use tablets for this. So having a touch enabled interface for this and especially not seeing any video streams, um, being able to um, get uh, or hide the chat and so on. Um, and 
it would also be uh, very useful as Fred envisioned in his talks uh, in the last days to have more persisting big blue button sessions so that everything is already in place when I start uh, my conference so that I have my presentations there that I uh, could reuse the shared notes and maybe uh, the polls are already stored um, and can be clicked on. Um, for the remote student, I guess the client we have at the moment is very good. And uh, in the next session, you would probably see uh, some ways on how to improve it, but that's not what I want to talk about here. So I can only re uh, um, recommend to go to the next uh, presentation of Clemens and uh, David. Um, and for the local student, um, I see that if we have a larger room, let's say 100 people, everybody is connected to Wi-Fi, we need to save bandwidth. So maybe we could get rid of the AV and um, simply um, not even hide it, that it might run in the background, that it's not uh, used at all to make sure that every client can uh, work reliable. And um, the presentation is also probably only interesting for people with special needs that have the chance then to uh, zoom in to see details. But for most people, that is also something that probably is not uh, very useful as I see the presentation on uh, the projector. Um, and they should see the Q&A tool. They should participate in polls. They could be able to uh, share, use shared notes. We heard that captions might be an issue or come up. And I guess even for students within the room, uh, being able to get a history of what was said uh, could be interesting. And for sure, the chat is also something that is, could be useful here. And if we finally look at the presentation PC, um, I would um, uh, say, that should be focused on presentation that should um, only show remote participant videos or um, something like this uh, when the people are speaking uh, i should not see my local video because the students in the room see the teacher already in the front of the room and the audio also is amplified within the room and does not need to go there and um, notifications should also be filtered um, that uh, only what makes sense uh, should be shown there, not uh, presentation has been uploaded or something like this. Um, the current status that we have here. So uh, at the University of Osnabrück, we are currently funding Blindsight for some accessibility and uh, first hybrid teaching improvements. So we are in frequent meetings with Fred um, on this and on the accessibility, the next talk from Clemens will tell you some more issues that we have in focus. Um, um, and we are aware that the, these are only first steps. So we don't think that we, at, with the current funding and with the current uh, time frame, we get uh, all of this done, what I've said. Um, but at the moment, we are working on the first approach of the automated Big Blue Button client. So hopefully also this will be done within the next months. Um, and yeah, as I said, we hope within the next years, we at our university have some staff and some uh, funding to uh, improve on this. And if anybody's interested, uh, collaborators are also welcome. So. Uh, we hope to get as much as it is liked and doable to upstream to Big Blue Button. Uh, so that's always our hope when we uh, um, yeah, are um, engaging ourselves with open source communities, that what we are thinking of is useful to others and we are open for discussion on that uh, to make it useful not only for ourselves but also for others. Um, so um, that's my talk. So uh, are there any questions?
and I have to look for the chat. I see some discussion. Um, good. Um, um, yeah, the so sixty by nine uh, camera stuff is always uh, <laughs> discussable. Um, Um, so, uh, I could even for the presentation view, the question from Lars, uh, see that it might be something that is within the general big blue button and could be activated. Um, but, um, um, I'm not sure. So, uh, it's most of the point is also, how do I get this trigger when starting triggered when starting the conference? So, um making sure that um, uh, when I start up uh, the meeting automatically, I'm getting to the right uh, uh, layout for the screen. And yeah, Fred, I hope that it's good feedback for you. As you know, we have a meeting soon again. <laughs> and um, um, I guess you know some of the, most of the stuff already from my lists. Um, and otherwise... Thank you so much, uh, Rudiger, for this really, just really interesting presentation. Um, and like Fred said, there's so much good feedback here. Um, we do have a little bit of time if anybody wants to type some questions in the chat. Uh, we do have a few more minutes for that. And I also pasted the link to the next session in the chat, um, which he talked about a little bit. It's all about improving the usability and accessibility of the glue button. And it is the final session of the conference. Um, and it's actually going to be um, a one hour presentation that's going to take a really deep dive into the usability. Um, and I think it might be, you know, pretty interesting. Um, if anybody found this session interesting, I think people will like both of them for sure. Uh, it looks as like I, somebody's typing. As I saw, especially David's talk already twice uh, now, I can only recommend it. It's based on a user study here at the University of Osnabrück with uh, 10 participants. And um, also the number of uh, testers was quite small. Uh, I guess they get some significant insights. So I could um, can only recommend to go over. Looks like Rob put a question in the chat and said, are all your wishes based on user feedback? Um, and not only, so um, several of these things, yes. So I go back on my slides. Um, um, moderated chat, uh, live video presentation area, chat with moderators, um, prepared polls are based on user feedback. So uh, our support is getting lots of requests there. Uh, I guess the issue with the Q&A tool is that some of our staff saw this in other live streaming applications and that we uh, don't think that many people know about these ideas so that they do not request it. Um, and with the raised hands, that is more or less based on what we see as a problem um, uh, coming up when we want to make sure that a moderator or that the uh, teacher within the room is able to manage what's happening out there.
Um, someone asks, where to store the location hardware setup list? Should the HTML5 client read a hardware setup cookie provided at a location? Um, I would more or less guess that it's a calendar entry that uh, we have for uh, the different venues, calendars that are read by the client and within the metadata, within the calendar, we would provide um, where to find which hardware and so on. But I'm not sure at the moment. So it's still some work in progress. Uh, we are more on the basics yet uh, after we finally found somebody for uh, programming this uh, to make sure that the basic idea is currently working. But uh, including all the important data into calendars is something that worked quite well for Opencast uh, that last presented uh, two meeting uh, two sessions ago, and I guess that is a working idea that is uh, nice architecture also. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you again for this presentation and taking time to be a part of the conference. And thank you to everyone who has attended and been watching. That link to our final session is in the chat and all of the recordings will be made available sometime next week um, after all the sessions are concluded. I hope everyone has a great day.